Hello, it's Scott Manley here, and today I'd like to look at the design of Space Shuttle Orbiter-style spacecraft. Now, uh, this is a quick approximation I've put together. Many of you have been using the new Mark III part, and uh, of course a lot of you have thought, let's try building a space shuttle, and it turns out it's not as easy as it looks, and there's a bunch of things that you may have overlooked if you've tried this. So, this is actually a test rig right now. It's rather more like the Buran, because it has these jet engines that I'm just going to use to show how it flies. I've uh, built this um, kind of a shroud at the back just to make it look a little more clean. That's actually built from control surfaces. You can disable the pitch yaw and roll and they will act as uh, stabilizers. Now this is obviously using the aerodynamics model of a uh, KSP.90 which means it won't work with a uh, FAR or it'll work differently. It won't work with Ferrum. It'll work differently with Near, and it will probably be obsolete by the time Kerbal Space Program 1.0 is released. So in the payload bay we've got a fuel tank and some air intakes, yes you can just close the cargo bay and have that work. Uh, once it gets into space, obviously it's not going to use jet engines in the final version, we're going to have liquid fueled engines here, but they will be fueled by an external fuel tank, which we will of course no, no doubt have a, a hilarious time attempting to bal balance. Now in space we're going to use these little uh, RCS engines fueled off monopropellant. That'll be just like the real space shuttle which used um, hydrogen and oxygen for its main engines but once in space it used a hypergolic fuel, uh, you know, using UDMH and uh, dinitrogen tetroxide and all sorts of other fancy chemical things. Anyway, the biggest problem that you're going to have is building the wings. Now I have a set of wings here. One thing that uh, has been, uh, well, one useful tip if you're building wings, right, is to build them with only one point of contact with the parent spacecraft because then if you need to move them around, you don't need to keep adjusting every single part individually. Secondly, struts. Make sure you've got your struts. Hook up your struts. In fact, uh, looks like we're missing some struts here, so let's add some more. Uh, you want to make sure, basically, that you're not going to have weird oscillations between parts. And these ones clearly are not wanting to hook up. Come on, there we go. And these two are hooked up in interesting ways. I want this to hook onto that, and it doesn't do that. Let's go that way then. Yes. Uh, you see, if that one was hooked at the back, and these weren't, then this would have a tendency to flap up and down, and that would actually accentuate uh, control motion. Okay, so... Before I actually bolt this onto the fuselage, let's, let's actually close up the patient here. You don't need to see the interior now that we're working on this. Um, we should look at the center of mass versus the center of lift. And of course you'll notice in the classic space shuttle profile, the center of lift is actually quite far back. And this is of course for stability reasons, right? Uh, uh, having a spacecraft is, that is stable is very, very useful. It means that it won't run out of control. However, a lawn dart is stable. You do not want to be flying something that behaves like a lawn dart. And I'm pretty sure if we try to fly this, it will not get off the runway and will probably run into the ocean at the end. Now, if we move this forwards, well, what happens is we kind of start to lose the classic profile of the shuttle. It looks a little front heavy. But, uh, you know, let's actually see how far we can do this. We'll move that there, and, oh, that's a little high. We're just obviously connecting this near the bottom because we know that that'll work. Okay, so that's kind of there, but um, I'm going to bet you my reputation that this thing will have a hilarious accident on launch. And... The other thing is, I probably need to move these forwards just a bit. Now, obviously, the point where these touch have to be behind the center of mass, but in front of these uh, control surfaces, which are going to push down the rear of the uh, spacecraft on launch. Let's try launching it. Okay, we're sitting on the runway. Let's see how this works. Throttle up. And, oh wow, that's really sitting kind of low there. I foresee that I will be losing chunks of my spacecraft if I try to lift off with this. But let's, let's let it happen, nevertheless. Okay, oh, we'll wait till we're up above about 100 and start to try pulling back. Nothing. Those tiny little control surfaces are giving me absolutely no response. And 
That is because the center of mass is so far back. Our center of lift is so far back compared to the center of mass. Look, uh, okay, this is it. Abort, 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 abort. Ah, dear, okay. We, there was no way out of that. Let's uh, reverse the space plane hangar. Well, that didn't work so well. So one of the reasons this doesn't work so well is that the default aerodynamic model in Kerbal Space Program really only affects wings, right? But with the space shuttle, the whole bottom of the spacecraft was actually designed as a wing. So this design uh, in real life would get lift from this nose shape all the way back and that would actually tend to push the center of lift forward because it's, you know there's no lift here guess what if we set this up right we should be getting lift from this so if you want to do this properly you really need to have a wing design which runs along the bottom of the spacecraft and uh, provides all the lift you need so let's actually try building something like that now, of course, getting the perfect space shuttle shaped wing is a, uh, well, it's something of an art. But what I've done, obviously, is I've started with a pair of uh, structural wings at the rear and uh, built everything forwards from there. Now, the other thing I've done at the front is you'll notice that I've put in a couple of uh, these delta wings and I've angled them upwards at the front. And that's because, of course, the nose itself is angled upwards. So if I'm following the contours of the spacecraft, I have to angle those wings upwards at the front. And that will actually tend to lift my nose up a little, which is actually a good thing. It's going to provide a kind of implicit nose up attitude that I really would like to have. Because if, you, if you've seen so far, the whole thing does want to pitch down. So by having the forward wings pitching upwards, we're really starting to treat this thing like a wing. We're adding curvature to it and uh, therefore adding a kind of a default uh, lift at the front here. Now obviously you add on as many control surfaces as possible but one of the things you'll uh, under you'll find out is that the wing surfaces currently available to go with uh, these spacecraft are far too small. So I moved this thing back and forth and I also noticed that for some reason my center of lift is actually in front of my center of mass and it's all down to these tiny wing streaks. I'm not sure what quite make, makes them quite so powerful. I suspect it's perhaps to do with the fact that the lift is applied at the point of connection and those things are connecting much further forward compared to the rest of the hardware or perhaps they just have insane lift ratios. So yeah, I mentioned that the the control surfaces are actually significantly smaller than the control surfaces you would expect for wings of this size. Good thing is, you can actually just add more control surfaces. And one way of doing this and making it work is to add these little structural wings, angle those upwards just a little, and uh, just connect them near to where the wing surfaces, sorry, sorry, to where the control surfaces should be. So again, we're adding a default restoring force pushing the rear of the spacecraft down and once we add the wing uh, the control surfaces it means we now have much more control over the whole thing so i've added essentially spoilers pushing the rear down and that will actually make the th whole thing at least fly a little better the question of whether we'll be able to land it well we'll find out of course this u-shaped wing surface is completely unlike any real wing. Real wings tend to have a bigger curvature over the top so that the Bernoulli force provides some level of lift, although uh, many, anyone that actually knows aerodynamics will tell you that is just a tiny factor of what actually makes aircraft fly. It's like a the lies to children version. So yeah, having this U-shaped wing does actually make the whole thing want to lift nose up quite easily. It becomes vastly more flyable compared to what it, what it once was. Of course, a key part of the space shuttle functionality was its ability to glide in for an unpowered landing and put itself down safely. So now I have something that can lift off from the runway, I can of course test this feature. So of course putting the nose down to about 25 degrees, my velocity vector is closer to 30 degrees and I'm descending at about 30 to 40 meters per second. This will of course destroy me if I hit the ground at this speed. So as I get low I flare hard and as hard as I flare 
the velocity, the vertical speed, the rate of sink is just too high. I've got it down to about 10 meters per second, but even with the nose as high as it goes, the whole spacecraft just can't hold together on impact. And so that brings us to another fundamental shortcoming of the aerodynamics in Kerbal Space Program. The lift to drag ratios are almost always terrible. Basically, during that glide descent, we are losing far too much speed. And then when we flare, we just don't have the excess speed left over to maintain lift and control the landing. If we have the engines, of course, we can put it down just fine because we have the, we have the engines to keep us moving so we can actually bring it in for a safe landing. Now, we can't really adjust the drag because of the primitive aerodynamics model. We can, however, exploit the primitive aerodynamics model. And you see I've added a pair of extra structural wings at the root. These don't really change the shape of the wing for the silhouette, let's say. But it, they do actually add lift, even though they would normally be occluded by other wing surfaces. We can take off at reasonable speeds. And uh, you see that everything is all hooked up nicely. We've got to make sure, of course, that when you're adding struts to connect the wings to the body, you should do from the wings to the body so you can move everything around. But does this actually work? Does adding these extra wings give us sufficient lift to manage a successful unpowered landing? Well, let's find out. Engines off. Everything goes eerily silent as Bill and friends descend towards the space center. You can see our uh, surface speed is about 100 meters per second, dropping below it. That is about 50% lower. The space shuttle glided in at about 300 knots, which is over 150 meters per second. So you can see how we are well below the kind of velocity you would expect from a space shuttle descent. And it's simply because the aerodynamics model does not do any of this particularly well. And we cannot wait until uh, Kerbal Space Program 1.0 comes and delivers the new aerodynamics unto us. And there will be great rejoicing and there will be great landing and there will be many, many crashes from people who can no longer fly their air aircraft. So beginning my flare here, and yes, I'm still losing speed, but uh, the difference is here that uh, we can actually fly at lower speeds because we have much better lift. We have those extra wings providing some force and touchdown first try. So those are a few hints for those who have been trying to build space shuttle-like uh, spacecraft. You are going to have to take advantage of the aerodynamics model. You're going to have to add in extra flaps, more control surfaces than would actually exist. You're going to have to deal with parts that don't work, aerodynamics that are just weird. But you can actually build them if you're willing to accept and cheat. I'm Scott Manley. Fly safe.